When the little dwarves returned home in the evening, they found Snow White lying on the ground, and there appeared to be no life in her body. She seemed to be quite dead. They raised her up and tried if they could find anything poisonous. They unlaced her and even uncombed her hair and washed her with water and with wine, but nothing availed. The dear child was really and truly dead. Then they laid her upon a bier, and all seven placed themselves around it and wept and wept for three days without ceasing. Then they prepared to bury her, but she looked still fresh and lifelike, and even her red cheeks had not deserted her. So they said to one another, We cannot bury her in the black ground. Then they ordered the case to be made of glass. In this, they could see the body on all sides, and the dwarfs wrote her name with golden letters upon the glass, saying that she was a king's daughter. Now, they placed the glass case upon the ledge on a rock, and one of them always remained by it watching. Even the birds bewailed the loss of Snow White. First came an owl, then a raven, and last of all, a dove. For a long time, Snow White lay peacefully in her case and changed not, but looked as if she were only asleep. For she was still white as snow, red as blood, and black-haired as ebony. By and by, it happened that the king's son was traveling in the forest and came to the dwarf's house to pass the night. He soon saw the glass case upon the rock and the beautiful maiden lying within and he read also the golden inscription. When he examined it, he said to the dwarves, Let me have this case, and I will pay what you like for it. But the dwarves replied, We will not sell it for all the gold in the world. Then give it to me, said the prince, for I cannot live without Snow White. I will honor and protect her as long as I live. When the dwarves saw that he was so much in earnest, they pitied him and at last gave him the case, and the prince ordered it to be carried away on the shoulders of his attendants. Presently, it happened that they stumbled over a root and with a shack, the piece of poisoned apple which lay in Snow White's mouth fell out. Very soon, she opened her eyes and raising the lid of the glass case, he rose up and asked, Where am I? Full of joy, the prince answered, You are safe with me, and he told her what she had suffered, and how he would rather have her than any other for his wife, and he asked her to accompany him home to the castle of the king, his father. Snow White consented. And when they arrived there, 
they were married with great splendor and magnificence. Snow White's stepmother was also invited to the wedding, and when she was dressed in all her finery to go, she first stepped in front of her mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? And it replied, The queen was fairest yesterday. The prince bride is now, they say. At these words, the queen was in a fury and was so terribly mortified what she knew not what to do with herself. At first, she resolved not to go to the wedding, but she could not resist to wish to see the princess. So she went, but as soon as she saw the bride, she recognized Snow White and was so terrified with rage and astonishment that she rushed out of the castle and was never heard of again. My lovely friends, continue and enjoy watching. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Bye bye.